Hello there everyone and welcome to Pick Up Play. Firstly, let me apologise for the headset. I don't have uh, a webcam and I don't have a desktop mic. And I tried, or well, last time I just recorded straight to my phone camera. It turned out okay, I had to boost the volume a bit. Can't get it to work very well this time. And uh, I tried Bluetooth headphones and, and stuff like that and it just didn't didn't work. So this is, this is what I wear when talking on Skype, which uh, it's not a great look, is it? So, oh well. Anyway, um... So this is a follow-up to a video I did last weekend, which was essentially I'd, I'd been I went to I bought an Elgato HD sixty S and I wanted to capture Dreamcast games, as everyone would, and I, I couldn't get it to work. The Dreamcast outputs at a bit of a strange resolution. I think it's five seven six by four eighty. I think either way, it's a it's essentially a four three four eighty p image or four eighty i image, depending on on how it's outputting it. Um, which the Elgato doesn't like. And um, if you if you could boost it to widescreen, it I, I speculated that would work. And um, similarly, I figured if you could maybe just boost it beyond seven twenty p, then maybe that would work too. So um, in the meantime, the video I put out, which I'll, I'll link to at the end of this video, um, I'll work out how to do that because I'm still new to uh, modern YouTube, YouTube three point or whatever we're on now. Um, that uh, I, I I tested the little box, got this little sort of tiny uh, SCART to HDMI box that I was trying to use as a way to capture the Dreamcast as a you know I'd given up on the HDMI idea, um, and I used that for PS2 and Wii, and it it worked pretty well for the most part. The PS2 was a little shaky in terms of uh, quality. The Wii maybe it was just a better cable, but that worked great. You know I was really pleased with that, but I still kept thinking you know there must be a way to boost the signal. And I was looking at the uh, OSSC, which is like 150 quid. Um, so that seemed like an expensive gamble if I'd gone with that route. But um, so I just figured all I need is a way to boost a HDMI signal. And so I kept looking and Amazon and Google, you know, they weren't that helpful. There's a lot of people saying, you know, can't really do it. You're going to have to get a composite and, um, and, and use that, which I, was the next step, I guess, to try. But, when I was editing the last video, when I was putting that together, I, I spotted this thing on, on Amazon, which is a uh, SCART to HDMI booster, signal booster, or um, up-reser, I guess. But it includes a HDMI input. So I figured, I'll, I'll give that a try. It was expensive. It was, well, not crazy expensive. It was £35. Um, and I got, you know, it's only gone and worked. Hence doing this video. So I'm going to uh, talk you through it. But this is got it here. Uh, it would ordinarily have a, a power cable going in as well. We'll get to the power cable because that it's got a power input going in. It's just a USB um, into, uh, I don't know what you call it. Just a, a sort of power socket. It's actually one there, a little round one. The issue with it is that it... Um, it seems to send power back to the Dreamcast if you if you plugged in via HDMI. So it obviously doesn't do it if it's SCAR, but with HDMI, if you um, plug the power into this while it's connected, you'll hear the beep of a VMU. You know, that is slightly worrying in and of itself, but what I did notice was the, the little um, LED triangle on the front of a Dreamcast that, depending on which region you're on, is either red or blue. That lights up. That's not, not fully, but there is a very faint glow, and that's a little worrying because I don't really want power going back into the I mean power goes into a Dreamcast that's that's how it works it shouldn't be too worrying but when it's turned off that seems like not the best thing so my recommendation is when you're not using the Dreamcast unplug this box but um aside from that you know I was recording for a few hours and it, it seemed fine what I will say is I'm probably going to avoid using I have a second Dreamcast that has an SD card reader in there rather than the GD ROM drive probably going to use that less with this um, when i'm capturing it's fine for the hdmi but when i'm capturing and using this box probably going to skip that uh, or not have long play sessions just focused i'm going to pick up from this point i'm going to capture now so maybe no sort of four hour live streams or something maybe we'll see if i if i start to trust it anyway what this box is is uh, as you can see here so this will be less useful for americans but still if you're after a hdmi solution this this might still work um, 
I found it on Amazon UK, and you can see here you've got your sky in as the power sky in HDMI in, and then on this side. You've got a couple of output options, your audio, you've got your HDMI, obviously, and then there is a coaxial, yeah, um, coaxial. But then you've got these buttons. Now, I'm going to show you some uh, some pictures. This is the first things I saw when I turned this on, when I set it up. I plugged in the HDMI. These error messages are the first thing I saw. So, as you can see, you've got um, various resolutions popping up, and it's saying the Elgato can't output them that is that's the problem i was having that's the the cause of buying this right if um you see that it's got different resolutions there is a button here the 720p slash 1080p if you press that that's when it scrolls through so you see the next one you'll see the next one press it again i get a black screen i restarted the elgato oh no i think i switched to uh, i switched to my monitor i'm using my monitor for it and switched um, just to uh, the, the HDMI input. My PC goes in through DVI, and so I just switched uh, which setting it was on, and and sort of was bouncing between the two, and the Dreamcast was playing. So that you know, okay, so why isn't it working through the Elgato? It's you know. so I restarted the Elgato software, picked it back up, and it picture was there, and uh, yeah, this is the. This is the game that uh, that I saw. The House of the Dead. Now, to, as much as I'd like to just sit here and watch House of the Dead, play House of the Dead, talk about House of the Dead, and uh, just do impressions of House of the Dead, I wasn't just going to leave it there. I, I thought I'd, I'd try a few other things. So, um, whilst I've not got it here, there is also like I said, the 1080p option. So I think that might have been 720p. But the... Um, if you, it's essentially scrolling through, so you get one 720p setting, a 1080p setting, one 720p, a 1080p, another 720, another 1080. And I think what's happening with the last two is that it's turning it widescreen. And that's the issue that the Elgato has. The 4.3 resolution of the Dreamcast is, is the problem, not that the actual number of, or not that it's you know 480p, it will, it will do 480p. It just won't do it in that 4-3 ratio. So this is stretching the image a little bit, which you're, you're going to see, and it's, it's probably noticeable in House of the Dead, um, which I, I'll try and find a clip and uh, that I think highlights it and put it up here. The House of the Dead. We're meeting G over there. What? Reload. Please be safe, G. How could anyone do this? It does look a little stretched. I could maybe solve that in sort of Premiere Pro when I'm editing these things down uh, to to do videos, to do YouTube videos. It's something to to think about. I just don't know how that's going to look. So that's something to experiment. I'm not going to bother doing a video on that. I don't think that seems a bit boring. But um, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll test it. Not here, not this, some other time. But then I figured, well, I'll, I'll try a few more a few more games. And so I, I um, my shelf behind me there, there was uh, a handful of um, Dreamcast games that I'd picked up recently, the past couple of months. Um, and so I thought I'd test those. And first up was Ducks 1.5.
So Dux 1.5 is uh, a side-scrolling shooter map uh, in the vein of our type, and it uh, it's very sort of smooth looking, and, and it does just look like that. It's not the HDMI or anything. It actually looks pretty good. I think. I mean, it just is just has that soft sort of look to it. Ran pretty well. I can't say I felt any lag or anything like that. I'm sure it was, but I can't say I really noticed it. I was terrible at it, but uh, first time playing it, and uh, yeah. I don't know. I think it looks okay. Again, might be a bit stretched, which maybe adds to the, the look a little bit, or takes away from the look, I guess. So the next game I tried, or next game on the pile, was a game called The Floygan Brothers Episode 1. They didn't do an Episode 2, so this is this is someone's Shenmue. You know what I mean? Like this is Someone is fuming and, and wanting a Kickstarter for this. Uh, I... I mean, it has. It's a, I'm assuming it's a European game. It has a very, very European look to it, very British sort of look to it. Um, I'll I'll play a bit more of it. It uh, it wasn't a cheap game, and um, so it, it should be played. But <laughs> yeah, it's got some interesting sort of concepts and um, sort of Abe's Odyssey sort of ideas, and but in three D and the way you have to talk to. Uh, between the brothers to, to get one to do things and, and that sort of stuff. Now, what's a seven-letter word that means circles of sugary baked dough with chocolate chips in them? Cookies! Let's make cookies! If we're going to make cookies, we need sugar. Pass me the sugar bowl, big brother. It's on the table. We need sugar. Chocolate chip cookies. We should probably add some uh, mm, chocolate. <laughs> Could you get the chocolate for me, Hoigel? It's up there on the top shelf. But how are you gonna get up there? We don't have a step ladder. Uh, let me check the manual. To get the chocolate, Hoigel should get Moigel. That would be me. To stand on the dizzy pad, then Hoigel should run around Moigel. If Heugel runs fast enough, Heugel will get dizzy and faint. Then Heugel can bounce on his belly like a trampoline to get to high places. Simple. <laughs> People do it all the time. Sounds crazy, but it just might work. Interesting idea. Um, there was a bit that I'm going to show as I'm talking right now where I had to grab onto a train. Oh, fucking Christ, that took a lot of effort. Like, over and over and over. I just couldn't do it. I don't... Clearly, I'm missing something. But, you know, maybe once I get past... That's just the tutorial, so maybe the actual game is, is not that much of... Uh, uh, that Not that frustrating. Because apart from that, the rest of it was absolutely fine. I, I had no issue with it. Um, it does look a little rough. The next game, though, really does look rough. And I think... Uh, I don't think that's anything to the HDMI. So this is Millennium Soldier Expendable.
so Millennium Soldier Expendable, if if you don't know, was um, a a launch game for the Dreamcast. I think it was a PS One game as well. So I think it is one of those games that the PS One, sorry, the Dreamcast got a few of, where it's a it's a PS One port, and there's you know they've 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 just sort of uh, improved the resolution or something. It, it's not it's not exactly pushing the Dreamcast, um, and it, it doesn't look like it's made for the the Dreamcast really. Uh, in fact, I'd imagine it's funny, it might be crazy talk, but if you've got hold of the PS One copy and then the Bleem disc, I do wonder if that'd look better. Maybe. Hmm. Um. Anyway, I, I've never really played it. I played the demo back in the day, but I never picked it up. And it was a game that was really, really cheap for years and years and years. And just over the past year, I've noticed it sort of creeped up in price. And it was, um, I think it sort of goes, it's again, not hugely expensive, but more than it's probably worth, sort of £20-ish, which then makes me worry for things like um, Incoming and Pen Pen. Which again, I mean, of those, in- Incoming is probably the better game, but uh, yeah, they're uh, they're launch games that you know I don't own and I never really wanted to, but I always sort of figured, well, four or five quid, not a problem. I'll pick them up one day. So yeah, maybe it's time to uh, to bite the bullet. Um, anyway, it looks a bit rough, and you know, less than great. But I might I might uh, do a video on it, take a look at it, and and sort of work through some of the. Uh, the Dreamcast launch games that I've, that I've got, which isn't loads, actually, I don't think. Ready to Rumble, Trick Style, a few of those. So the next game that I picked up, or sort of the most recent pickup, I guess, is Mac and X, which did get a uh, an English language release, um, but I don't have any. It's more expensive. So I, I picked up the Japanese one just as a curiosity, and it wasn't too expensive. I thought it looked interesting. I've played through Japanese games before, not a problem, I don't speak it read it or anything but i figured i'd I'd be able to work it out um i've got to say i really enjoyed it i I I ended up playing for about half an hour or so while i was testing it and yeah it's great it has and you'll see it here but it has um has a real atlas look to it it looks like a shin megami game like it's, it's proper atlas キレツコードが未定です。どのように対処しますか。人工生命の名前なんて乱数でいいんじゃねえの? So yeah, I'm not going to show any of the gameplay instead. What I did there was I figured, well, I enjoyed that. It's the last game I put in. Oh, I wonder what it looks like in, if I take the HDMI out and put in Scott and just run it as Scott instead. Let's see. Let's see how that looks and, and compare. So this is the same intro. I don't skip the text as much, but this is the same intro going through the uh, going through the Scott upscaler. キレツコードが未定です。どのように対処しますか？人工生命の名前なんて乱数でいいんじゃねえの？私たち同じ生命なのよ。差別しないで。それなら本人に決めさせようぜ。魔剣の意志を尊重してさ。I think that looks pretty good. It's not the most amazing thing in the world. It's not the most amazing looking game in the world, but. That comes out okay via SCAR. So that then got me thinking about games that use the SCAR or need to use the SCAR, won't work via HDMI. And one of those is Last Blade 2. So if you look here, if you if you plug in the uh, the HDMI and put Last Blade 2 in, this is what you get. So with with it not working, and it is a it is a problem with it, a, a known problem. With it. There's a few games. I think JoJo has it as well. There's there's a handful of games that has it have this issue that it, that essentially won't work with the uh, the VGA port or VGA adapter for the Dreamcast, which is what the uh, HDMI is essentially doing. 
So to play that, I'm going to need to use the scar, so which, you know, not a problem. It's a good reason to test it. And yeah, so this is me trying it. What I think you'll notice, though, is it looks a little grainy. I think there's a part of the upscaling is it's then um, sharpening it. And I think it's overdone it with the pixels. I, th I think it is a little rough looking, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so I'll put in another bit of footage now just so you can uh, take a look. So, yeah, it looks, looks a little sharp, a little off to me. So I figured I'd... Well, is it because... Last Play 2 is like a 240p game or something. Uh, we talked about this on the last video with uh, SNK versus Capcom Chaos. Or is it um, is it just the, the scar upscaling? So so I figured the uh, best way to try is I'd compare it to uh, another 2D game just to see if it was Last Play 2. And, and so here's Street Fighter Alpha 3. Which looks all right. I mean, the Capcom logo, which I'll, I'll just put in here, I think looks a little sharp. So it's, it clearly is over sharpening stuff, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Um, it certainly looks all right. Bright and colourful. Really pleased with how it looks. Um, sounds great as well. Like it's, uh, it, it looks all right. Now, obviously, Alpha 3 works via SCAR anyway. So, uh, sorry, via HDMI. So that's not a problem. But yeah, I think that looks all right. Last Play 2 if I want to play it which I do, I guess. Um, 
yeah, I, I guess I'll just have to rely on the on the scarf for it. So whilst I had the scarf lead set up, I thought what I'd do is, um, there are a couple of other games that have issues. That I just wanted to see if I could um, if I could get them working. But one of them I want to try is one that I seem to remember having to use the RF lead to play. Um, and that is Gigawing. Now, I think this is a region-specific issue. I think if you get the PAL version, this works fine. I have the US version. It's one of only like two US versions of, of Dreamcast games that I've got. Uh, misjudged that one, I think. But... Um, yeah, so if, if you try and boot the game using the SCAR, this is what happens. So it just keeps rebooting and rebooting. Um, so I tried it with a CDX to see if um, if that would work. It just keeps rebooting and rebooting. I was really hopeful <laughs> that was how to do it. Uh, just by use of this CDX, I've got it. I might as well use it. Um, so then I tried it with uh, HDMI. And this is what happened. Okay. Okay. Now, you probably noticed that's a bit blue. Um, I figured... Oh, well, that makes sense, because it's RGB, right? And the B stands for blue, so, you know, there's your problem. And I put something else in, I, I can't remember what it was, but I put another game into test, and that was blue as well. And that's when I realised, oh, I've just not put in the cable properly. That's your problem. So, when I input the cable properly, here's how giggling looks. And that looks pretty good, right? Like, that's not too bad. Again, probably a bit chunkier than it should be. A uh, little stretched. I am fucking terrible at it, I'll tell you that much. So that's why you get in the boss, because I did all right on the boss. But, um, yeah, it's... I remember quite liking Gigawing, but I'm absolutely fucking terrible at it. All in all, I've got to say, this little box has been pretty good. It, it's certainly worth the money, and it solved the problem. Um, I'll link to the... Uh, to the Amazon page where I got it from on, on the video and, and you'll see it up here now where you can see a better view of, of some of the buttons and stuff. Um, again, things I'll, I'll say about it. It seems to send power back through to the Dreamcast, which is a little worrying. Don't know if it's going to cause a problem, but unplug it. Don't, don't leave it plugged in if you're not using the Dreamcast. Uh, the other issue is, and it's only a small amount of power, I just want to be clear, it doesn't even fully light up that led but it's clearly something it doesn't turn the vmu on it just makes it make a sound but it's enough that i'd, I'd be you know unplug it when you're not using it and the other issue and the, and the one that's sort of key to remember is you have this uh 720p 1080 button mess around with it like press it a few times we, when you get a black screen restart your elgato it will work Oh, it has done for me. I've I did at one point have to restart the computer as well because at that point I you know changed so many games, so many settings that uh, I think it just had a bit of a fit and you know. But as a way to capture, this seems all right. Now, obviously, I'm not guaranteeing it. If you buy this and it doesn't work, like don't come crying to me. But it has worked for me. You can see it's worked for me, and uh, yeah, I can't say I'm pretty pleased with it. So. 
with that in mind, if it's uh, if this has been helpful, give I I never asked this before, never asked this. But give the video a like, give us a subscribe, because I'll do more videos. I'll do more Dreamcast videos. Probably the last one of uh, how do you capture this? How did I capture this? Because I've got the Saturn covered. I've got the PS One covered. The GameCube slash Wii covered. Whether or not this will work for an N64, I don't know. Um, I don't have mine with me to test. Um, yeah, something to try, I guess, at some point. The only other one I'd like to test is, because this is my other solution for the, the Dreamcast, was what if I sent the HDMI signal through an Xbox One and then into the Elgato from there? Because I know people have done it to, I think when the PS4 launched, there was some sort of signal there, I, I presume HDCP or something like that, and you had to, to strip it out, you had to go through something else. So people were going through their Xboxes, on, through the pass-through, and, and getting a, you know getting that signal stripped away. If that's the case, then it means it's the Xbox output in it, and if the Xbox is outputting a 1080p signal, because that's what the Xbox outputs, or 720p even, then that would solve the problem the Elgato has with the Dreamcast. So if you've got an Xbox One and a Dreamcast and an Elgato and a HDMI cable for your Dreamcast, give it a try. I unfortunately don't have the Xbox, otherwise I, uh, I'd i give this a, a go, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, if this has been useful, I'm really pleased that it has because uh, from reading around, it seems like a lot of people have had issues. If it isn't something you particularly care about, then hopefully it was at least interesting. You got to see some good games, uh, slightly obscure games, admittedly, and Flake and Brothers as well. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll I'll do some more videos soon.